The summer has ended. These have been such full packed months and I have really let myself bathe in the rush of the energy of summer. And in a moment I will speak about the number one misunderstood aspect of living in an intentional community. But first, I want to take you with me on the journey of what my summer has been so far. I always go home to Sweden, to the north, to spend time with my family at my grandmother's place. It's always such a timeless experience, just as going back to my childhood. Yes, Then we went down to the south of Italy, to a place very dear and special to Damaner, to which Damanerians migrate every year by the end of the summer. Walking the spirals in the sunset over the sea really makes one touch the realm of the infinite. The ocean is so warm and welcoming and big, dark and deep at the same time. My relationship to the ocean is very similar to my relationship to life itself. You never know what will come up from the depths but I always choose to dive right in anyways. Not doing so would make it all be for nothing. But I'm always really happy to come back to this beautiful valley. And every time I am away and then return, I feel endlessly grateful to call this my home. I really feel like I belong amongst the mountains and the waterfalls. And of course, in this community full of crazy and big ideals for the world. so nice to be back after this summer and to start creating content again. It really makes me feel that I can reach the world in some way or at least people who are interested in these kind of topics as I was before I came to a community. So I'm happy to be back after this summer that was very intense that you have just seen. And I also think it's important though to have some breaks every now and then to really just go into and live the moment and not think about anything else. 
So that's what I allowed myself to do. But now I'm back with this video to really try to understand what is the most misunderstood aspect about community life or living in an eco-village. And I, the last years I have started working a lot with groups who have come here to Damaner to experience what it is living in a community and experience the different aspects about Damaner. And I've realized that this aspect is really not understood before you start living in a community yourself. And this aspect is also really important to understand if you want to go and create your own community. And I will make a special video of why many intentional communities and eco-villages actually doesn't last more than just a couple of years. And what are the different ways that you can structure the community or what are the things to think about when creating a community that can actually allow your community to grow in the years. So Damaner is one of the oldest communities in the world. We are reaching 50 years in uh, two years, I think we are on, a or on our 48th year we celebrated this August. So there is a lot of things that we have incorporated and learned along the way of how to make a community sustainable in the long run. And I will make a special video for that. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see this kind of content in the future. So what is the most misunderstood aspect of an intentional community? Well, it is this thought that an intentional community is some kind of utopian society. And what is problematic with this is that utopia is very difficult to define. And it's different things for different people. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what is utopia? And to answer that question, we need to ask another question. And that is, what is it that we are escaping from in the current society today? In my own experience, what I was most drawn to and what I see that most people are drawn to when it comes to intentional communities is to have an alternative to society that seems more and more individualized, cold, filled with rules and structures that are very disruptive and lacking a lot of connection and meaning. So when people think about a utopia, an eco-village and an intentional community, what comes into mind is really the aspect of being self-sustainable, being cut off from society, living off grid, having conscious connections and relationships both with nature and with other people, but also to be able to live without those kind of rules and restrictions that society have, needing to have a kind of work, needing to have a kind of organization around your life, and going by the flow, living with the rhythms of nature. And of course, these are aspects that are incorporated in many eco-villages and intentional communities. But what most people don't see is that to be able to allow this kind of situations, this kind of life, you actually need a lot of organization and structure and a lot of those aspects of normal society that people are escaping from. So to break it down very fast for you, what is it that people are hit by often when they come to an intentional community, that they are delusioned by, that they feel that that was not really what they expected and that didn't match the idea that they had of a utopian society. So the first aspect is that there is much less living in the flow, going with the rhythms of nature, doing what you want and so on, and much more structure, organization and actually rules. Having this kind of structure in a community is really vital for its survival. And deciding as a community not having rules or structures or organizations really creates a very fertile ground for conflicts and misunderstanding, which is one of those many aspects to why many new communities and eco-villages fail before they're even born or before even a couple of years of life. Going into the second aspect, I want to share my own personal story. When I came to Damaner, I really came because I was longing for this sense of going back to nature. I was really longing for this sense of growing my own food and being in connection with my food, with the system, to live off grid and to be self-sustaining. So what I was really looking forward to was to put my hands into the dirt and start working with the ground and start growing my own food and so on. And this story is very embarrassing actually because in my program that I had, which was this program of the new life, we only had one day a week when we went to work on the farm of Damaner where I could really have that kind of immersive experience. And I think it didn't even last three weeks, so three days before I just started to really 
resent these days that I felt like, no, I cannot take not even a day more working with the vegetables on the farm. And this was actually a wake-up call for me from a very naive and perhaps romantic idea of what it actually is growing your own food. And it's hard work. You can ask any farmer or any person who's working in that field, they know that it goes a lot into working with the soil and creating your own food. And if you do it completely by yourself, that's a full-time work. And that is also why you need to have an organization to decide who does what and when and what kind of technology to implement to help with these things. So we cannot completely disconnect from outer society or from the new technologies because they're actually good. It's only a matter of how you use them and to use them consciously. Because if we don't implement these kind of technologies or a kind of structure around this, we tend to go back in time instead of going towards the future. And the third aspect of a utopian society is conscious relationships. And this really hits hard for people. What you're trying to escape from in outside society comes with you wherever you go because it is within yourself. So coming to a community is really hard because people mirror everything that you need to work on within yourself. And it's very easy to say, oh no, this is not good or they don't understand or they are not conscious. But what we need to do is really to start from ourselves and also to recognize that a community is not a place for enlightened people. A community is a small fraction of all of humanity that comes both with the beautiful parts and also with the more difficult ones. And people are on completely different levels. So you will find people who are more conscious and you will find people who are less conscious. The difference from outside society is that within a community there are shared core values and people tend to aspire more to personal growth. People are more available to look at their things. That was everything for today. If you like this content, please make sure to like and subscribe and share it with the friends or with anyone that you think could draw value from this. And I see you next time.